It's purely to see how it works. These are the latest CML lens tests. They're not meant to be scientific in any way. They're purely to give you a, a reference of how the color varies from lens to lens and how the bokeh varies from lens to lens. And it's enormous. There's huge color variations and the highlight variation is staggering. The highlight variation within a lens from wide open to only one stop down is gigantic on some of the lenses. And some of the lenses are absolutely beautiful wide open and really boring stop down. We're shooting everything using Kodak Grayscale Plus and we will set mid gray on the Master Prime exactly to where that says, which in an 8-bit scale is 122, 122, 121 RGB. And the thing that triggered this off was me looking at um, Harry's demonstration of signature lenses at camera image, where I had a fairy light tree in the foreground, a model, and a fairy light tree in the background. But the background was only like a meter behind the model. And I wanted to see what happened when you went well back. And so that's why we've done this, to extend it. And you can see why a lot of manufacturers wouldn't want you to go much more than a meter or two beyond, because some odd things happen. What I'm doing is we're using a master prime, which doesn't cover, but we're using as a color reference. And that will be our neutral gray. And then we'll have, I'll store those as presets in Resolve. I'll apply those presets to every lens we do. So you'll be able to see what the offset is in terms of color from that one standard. So one of the things of the workflow that we do is we work in Resolve, but we work in ACES CCT. And the reason we work in ACES is to give us a standard platform that is manufacturing independent. And we know that if we use a standard IDT input transform, standard output transform, the results are fairly consistent, very consistent actually. And that any variation in color is down to the camera or the lens. It's not the system. I've kept the lighting setup really simple. In the key light is a Celeb soft light. The rest of it are Ikea fairy lights. Lots of them, there's about 500 altogether, I think. And the idea is to give us highlights in depth. So that as we pull focus, we're pulling focus through highlights uh, from under one meter, well, well under one meter, to about five meters from camera. The idea is to see how the highlight bokeh changes as we go. There's an interesting thing happened that I've not seen before on a couple of lenses, that when we get to the five meter mark, we're getting the highlights changing from red to green or green to magenta. And I've just rocked it backwards and forwards to show that. But the idea is to show up the shape of the bokeh because it changes radically from lens to lens and it changes radically from stop to stop. So some lenses have a really pleasing highlight shape when they're wide open or a stop down. But when they're two stops down, the highlights are really disgusting. And you look at it and go, I'd never shoot with that lens. Then you look at the same lens and stop wider open and go, God, yeah, I'd like to use that. And it's quite amazing how much difference a stop makes. And that was the whole point of this fairy light in depth, was to be able to really show that and never make any judgments in the tests. It's there for people to look at and decide what they like. We're shooting on the Venice. It's a great full frame camera. And I've used the Venice for Super 35 tests as well. It's the most consistent in color in over and under exposure. The importance on the, all of these tests is to remove as many variables as possible and to make everything simple and reproducible so that anyone else can still do the same thing. And what we generally do is apart from putting up finished material, the raw files are generally uploaded so people can play with them to the heart's content and tell me I've got it wrong.